the anima and the animus part three we might even have to do a part four because this is so rich in content but maybe even a part like... five six seven and eight maybe yes. a, maybe a different part on a different page yes, knows, yes. we'll do line by line or something like that i'm here with james b dowlin and we're continuing our ion lectures back into uh young again and this time we're going to talk a little bit more about the collective unconscious and where the anima positions herself in uh, that context and where the animus works and we're going to get a little bit more meaty take out the more dramatic earlier stuff that we're talking about and get really into the prominent way that these two archetypes affect people and how it becomes quite a mind fuck shall we say that uh, you can have this archetype in the sky communicating with you and it also being like a god that lives outside your brain so it's it's sort of like Jung's getting into the freaky idea that the the archetype lives outside your head but somehow affects your head almost like facebook da, 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 fake news <laughs> conspiracy so this is christmas <laughs> yeah first of all um merry christmas everybody uh, this of course is, is the time of year in which we worship our lord jesus christ and it yes. fits within the subject material uh, hopefully after this we will actually get onto the lord jesus christ unless we get stuck on um i, I mean this particular section just so everyone knows we're currently on page 16 of the book this is like yes. page six or something so it's very 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 slow progress through the book <laughs> but hopefully we're doing it um as much service as it requires yes we, we like to service it a lot. We are just... Oh, and I must say, you might notice this time that us two soft-faced boyos... The softest. We are very well dressed this time around. We decided since it's Christmas and uh, we, we'd look fantastic because we are trying to woo the anima secretly here. We're trying to get her on our side. So well, we that'd be the anima us. secretly. Ah, yes. Yes, quite. Unless so. you're one of those homosexual types that uh, Neil was talking about. Have you disappeared... Well, in case Steph has disappeared, let's, let's uh, dive. Oh, oh no, you, you you have returned. You froze for a second there, so I don't know whose side it would have got there. Oh shit! Okay, right. Um, let's um, let's crack into it, my man. Let's just go straight into it because we've got a lot to talk about, and we'll we'll flesh out the story as we move into it. So, James, since you're the non-dyslexic person of this uh, this duo. <laughs> Um, please, please read from us. I say with the functioning brain. All right, here we go, people. So, wait, you say thirty-three. I I would go for that. I'd okay, go cool. Let's. I'm going to read through thirty-three people. So, I hope you're sitting comfortably. Um, like the anima, the animus too has a positive aspect. Through the figure of the father, he expresses not only conventional opinion but equally what we call spirit, philosophical or religious ideas in particular, or rather the attitude resulting from them. Thus, the animus is a psychopomp a mediator between the conscious and the unconscious and a personification of the latter. Just as the anima becomes through integration the eros of consciousness, so the animus becomes a logos. And in the same way that the anima gives relationship and relatedness to a man's consciousness, the animus gives to a woman's consciousness a capacity for reflection, deliberation and self-knowledge. That was a pretty easy, pretty, pretty easy paragraph to read, I think. Well done, sir. You, you fucking nailed it. I know. I said for psychopomp. That's a, quite an interesting word. Like psycho um the, uh, i i assume everybody knows what a psychopomp is a psychopomp is a um is a a comparative mythology phrase so when they studied many myths they came up with this idea that there's this one character that shows up quite often known as a psychopomp and what he does is he when you die he takes you into the other world so Jung is hypothesizing that we have this collective imagination where all these gods these super energies live and this is also where you go when you die and then um, the psychopomp is this character that pops out of there and says, okay, you've died, tough shit, come up and I'll lead you through the dangerous place into this, uh, this, this overworld. It was quite common in Egyptian mythology. You've probably heard of the Book of the Dead. And the Book of the Dead itself could be considered psychopomp because it, it, it shows you how to get through the, the duat, the, the, the kind of maze between here and the afterlife in order to make it out. Tibet and the Buddhists also have a Book of the Dead, which is very fascinating because when someone dies, they sit down with the dead body and they for 30 days and they read the Book of the Dead to the dead body, almost as if it's guiding their consciousness. So the, the word, the logos, is like guiding their consciousness through the little uh, challenges that they're doing. And I'm going to pop in with an interesting story. Um, Terence McKenna once sat down with a Tibetan monk and convinced him to take DMT. And uh, the Tibetan monk was like, all right, fuck it, I'll take the DMT. And he said, fuck it as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he took the DMT and he said that he went to this place because everybody goes in this place in DMT. 
And then the Tibetan monk came back and said, that's it. And Terence was like, what? And he's like, that's the furthest you can go without going too far. And it's almost like he was he was saying, once you go across that boundary at the very edge of the DMT experience, you're in the land of the dead and your soul leaves your body. And he was like, it's the psycho, uh, the, the magic space between here and the afterlife that, that you explore and you need to learn how to get through. So often the shamanic experience could be the ability to explore that. Nonetheless, let's stick on Jung. James, any thoughts? Yeah, so when you mentioned the psychopomp is the mediator between, I guess, life and death, it's very interesting in this context because it's not necessarily life and death, it's consciousness and unconsciousness. And, yes. if, that, and if that's a very similar thing, it's like, well, okay, so what exists in the land of the dead? It's like, well, that's where the gods are meant to live, isn't it? And it's like, well, what he's saying here is in the collective unconscious, that's also where the gods live. So in many ways, maybe not necessarily death would be the best way to frame it, but more something like, um, this is chaos. This is the mysterious place. You don't understand it. This is where the rules which normally govern your life no longer govern that place anymore. And instead, you're at the service of these these entities, these for all intents and purposes, deities, gods, because that's what they are, right? If it's like if something exists within our collective unconsciousness that has control over us is separate to us, and that's a really difficult thing to get your head around. It's separate to us, and we have to do as it says or work in harmony with it then it's a god so in many ways what Jung has done in, in his work not just in this book is actually say that like religion is a real thing you yes. know it's, it's it's not not necessarily the abstractions onto the outside world in many ways that would be what the collective unconscious is doing projecting things onto the outside world but it's like religious truths are real truths because they exist within you you aren't your own god it's like that's like such a terrifying <laughs> idea to me it's, it's fantastic. so crazy it's so good like oh, i love geeking out on that because it's it's quite based like because this stuff you're not supposed to believe we're supposed to be like you know uh like everything's made out of matter and all that shit and like you know matter's great and all that stuff but <laughs> but when when you really dig down to it like young's giving you a really based empirical and psychologically relevant way to take stuff like we could call it psycho spiritual stuff seriously which is so awesome because it's like um like that, that idea that there, there is this this drama of of gods playing out and these gods can send energy to us and this energy that they send to us affects our psychology that affects our actions and therefore affects history is not to be taken lightly like that's that's a massive idea and and he he is like he's that's the fundamental idea that he puts forward in most of his philosophy and it's kind of it's implied because he doesn't explicitly say it because he would have lost his scientific credibility but that's what he's saying i believe and I, like that's unbelievably deep in its its connotations and what i think is interesting to bring it relevant to the text we're talking about here is that he says that women have this ability at their most noble form to have pure access to that power the animus the male model that they create in their mind first of all to judge the character of a man can turn into this wise guru that can speak to them and he can actually travel into the collective unconscious collect the the the, the knowledge from the gods and bring it back to them and speak to them and tell them what's going to happen and this is why you'd often get that situation where women would be uh uh, oracles and stuff like that is because at the very highest level they can actually get the direct words from the the super sphere if you will and that's something that males don't get access to which is interesting coming from young it means that women are better than men is that what he's saying oh, everybody would love that what is yeah um, some of these some of these people would definitely love that but what, what young's saying as well like he's definitely saying men and women are different psychologically and that's going to be upsetting to a lot of people but young doesn't care because young is, is a based gentleman he don't give no fucks about what you think um, like men and women are different but in order to be a complete man or a complete woman you have to have a spark of manliness within the woman and a spark of femininity within the man so that you yes. sort of become a more balanced person which um that, that almost throws away the the radical feminists and the radical red pillars at the same time where, where, yes yeah we, yes. We, we, it's like either gender is doesn't matter it's like bollocks it does Jung said so you don't get to throw away Jung like it matters and you also don't get to be one of the red pillars who's like just masculinity unless you have embedded within that um it needs to be psychologically healthy you have embedded within that the anima and animus concept because you, you can't just get rid of it you you like this is important stuff and i think that's all that's in that particular paragraph unless you yes. have to add anymore 
a, a quick a quick note on that is that uh, Jung said that when you integrate your femininity, it makes you more masculine. Mm -hmm. and I think that sounds like a a weird idea, but I, I will put it. I will frame it in a practical sense. I've noticed that when um, say if I want to go and talk to a girl, it's very scary. It's very scary. And so in order for me to talk to that girl, I actually have to conquer a very feminine part of me, which is my emotions. I have to understand that I'm scared of talking to this beautiful girl because she might reject me and I'll feel vulnerable. And that's and a with you, that happens all the time. Like you've, as far as I'm aware, you've only just been rejected forever. Like all the past, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm an incel, you motherfuckers. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take, I'm so angry. I'm going to turn MGTOW and take over the world. You just wait for it. But it's, um, it's that like these, these emotions, these aspects of myself, of my psychology that I'm dealing with are almost always the, uh, the vulnerable, you could even say the feminine parts of them. And that's the part of myself that I want to deny. I want to deny. I want to be like, I'm a man. I don't feel any fear. I don't feel any emotions. And I want to make everything logical. And so what I'll do is I'll deny those parts of myself. And then the problem will be that when I see a woman that, and I'm scared to talk to her, I'll start rationalizing. So I'll create all these reasons not to, or I'll create these reasons why she's evil. That will even happen. And that's me. That's an anima projection happening right in the moment. And so what I need to do in order to actually go over there and talk to the girl and not be a fucking weirdo where i'm like rah, rah, rah. i have to go over and like <laughs> what was that even an impression <laughs> you want all fours you got this hand that comes out of your mouth or something <laughs> give me give me your give me your stuff <laughs> i uh i uh i have to go into my feminine side i have to go into my vulnerable side my emotional side my feels and i have to understand them and understand why they're honoring me it's like yeah you're taking a risk you're kind of putting yourself out there it's scary but it's okay you're not gonna die you, you almost have to build a masculine relationship with your own heart you have to say it's okay dude you're gonna be it's okay inner you it's gonna be okay you know there's gonna be this flash of emotion but you'll get through it. it'll be all good and then you go do it and then like it, once you overcome that that's so much more masculine like the courage that's what you get you get courage this is it's like boyhood deal with the emotional side and then you go do the the approach and then it's courage you get and that's like super masculine and so the real man does integrate that to a large extent and it's not like you know femininity he doesn't go and like you know i like be a female he 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 finds the feminine part of himself and integrates it and then it becomes a superpower it, it becomes makes him more full and more masculine and, and gives him this access to these more noble emotions and that was a bit of a rant but i really truly believe what young was trying to say was was a, a very based and juicy man thing i think what we should do when obviously these are played in lecture theaters is turn this into neil strauss's the game but rather, <laughs> than, rather than give people pick up books and pick up videos just give them some of this yeah, this is this is why we dressed up, guys. This is because we're gonna grab our potato cameras and just go out in the street and be like, wait, wait, is his study in young. This is how you <laughs> talk to a woman. Juan. God, Jesus Christ. All right, I shall press onwards, people. Yes, do, do that, that, that was, I really enjoyed that paragraph. It was very nice. Yes, I, uh, it was great. Found, found fantastic. Okay, so the effect of anima and animus on the ego is in principle the same. This effect is extremely difficult to eliminate because in the first place, it is uncommonly strong and immediately fills the ego personality with an unshakable feeling of rightness and righteousness. In the second place, the cause of the effect is projected and appears to lie in objects and objective situations. Both these characteristics can, I believe, says Jung, be traced back to the peculiarities of the archetype. For the archetype, of course, my friends, exists a priori, a priori, depending on your accent. This may possibly explain the often totally irrational, yet undisputed and indisputable existence of certain moods and opinions. Perhaps these are so notoriously difficult to influence because of the powerfully suggestive effect emanating from the archetype. Consciousness is fascinated by it, held captive as if hypnotized. Very often the ego experiences a vague feeling of moral defeat and then behaves all the more defensively, defiantly and self-righteously, thus setting up a vicious cycle which only increases its feeling of inferiority. The bottom is then knocked out of the human relationship for, like megalomania, a feeling of inferiority makes mutual recognition impossible. And without this, there is no relationship. This um, there's there's two two things I underlined here because I thought they were fascinating. First of all, consciousness, consciousness, consciousness is fascinated by it, held captive as if hypnotized. Mm. And maybe maybe I will go on a, a proper tirade and rant about that. So first, 
what's your thoughts on the inferiority makes a mutual recognition impossible? I thought that was a crazy idea as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to briefly say about um, consciousness feels uh, like, like was it fascinated with it. That's what happens when you see a beautiful woman as well. Yes. It's, like, it's like reflected in, in real life. It's like, oh, what is this? It's like, you know what it is. It's like a woman, but you don't see woman. You see sort of like um, genetic potential to have babies with, a really nice, <laughs> fun time to have with, and it's just a beautiful work of art. So it's like you're always like fascinated. You're you, you know the anima projection. It grabs you, etc. Et um, what was that last line you were saying? Um, um, that's a really good point, though. To, to sort of describe what Jung is talking about here is is that idea of uh, getting caught up. In another book, he talks about the idea that the stallion will be like nice and chilled, uh, like the horse, like the stallion would be nice and chilled in the field, munching on grass, and then you'll drop in a mare, and you'll like see it, and you'll just go crazy and uh, run straight over to her. And it's that same effect when you're like moseying down the street and then you're like, da, 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 thinking about your boyo thoughts, you know, thinking about football or whatever the fuck you think about young or like, you know, doing, doing pull-ups. Football and young, that's it. <laughs> and then, and then a, a lady just walks across and she's beautiful and it's like, <laughs> it's just all this, like the entire psychological environment just goes, everything else gets filtered out and you're like, zoom, what is that? And uh, it's, it's that type of, this pattern appears in reality that almost fits the archetype to an extent and the closer she is to the archetype the more beautiful she is obviously and so the more intense the energy the draw is towards her and um, yeah so um that, that's a really interesting thought yeah, yeah. Fear, inferiority thing is though like the thing why i found that interesting is he's talking about uh the, the megalomania inferiority making the recognition a problem so obviously if this woman is the most beautiful um you can cause that problem where you're you pedest is that what he's saying you're saying you pedestalize the the anima because she's the, she's the representation of the goddess and so you make yourself inferior to her and so she's sort of like that's disgusting like what the fuck like stop yeah, yeah like, he's, oh my God. He's, he's what's nice about these ideas is it's multiple things at once so like we just talked about it was like you get enamored by a particular pretty girl but and it's also like a god and you know, a, a, a worshipper of said God, I suppose, someone who's under the control of the God. And it's also like a human relationship in psychological terms where the ego is not inferior to the anima or an animus. It just feels inferior because it's under the under the control of it. So what he's done is actually like stacked up multiple literary levels at once to put it into one thing, I guess, to make it easier to read. So so if, if and this is something you, that you need to understand, it's like the anima and the animus are not are not a part of you. They're, they're a part of your inner psychic environment, but they're not a part of you. Like the center of, just to recap, I suppose, the center of consciousness that is you watching this video or listening to this video right now, that's your ego. It's like, that, that's what it is. When people talk about ego, that's specifically it. And it's like, the anima and animus is a separate autonomous thing. So if it's a separate autonomous thing that exists with you, you have to have some kind of relationship with it. And in order for you to uh, engage in psychic hygiene or engage in individuation, you have to have a good relationship with that thing. Or else, in ma and just to listen to the to the Patreon thing uh, with Sargon of Avocad, it's like the the manifest observable behavior of 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 how you <laughs> of, of how you actually act out your particular relationship becomes toxic. It doesn't serve you very well. So you you would you project certain negative emotions, you project ideas onto objects and people. Usually, with this, it's on people of the opposite sex. So you have to have some kind of healthy relationship with them, or else you cannot engage in good psychic hygiene, or else it will overpower you or you become resentful and bitter against womankind as such for example yeah, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it's like so in, in order to, you know it's like you can take whichever path you want there's not necessarily moral value built into this it's it's what you want do you want to be psychologically healthy do you want do you want do you want to have the best life you possibly can do you want to have coherence in your inner in a psychological environment it's like then maybe you should have a good relationship with your anima and animus and that starts by articulating it and understanding that a lot of the things that you project onto people of the opposite sex is not a result of them or womankind as such it's it's a result of your your internal conflicts that's that's a really good point that's a really good point like ah uh, i have a massive tirade written down here that i definitely will have to go into at some point have you actually written out a tirade it's oh like look it's, word. it's like all over the fucking can you see it there it's you mark up there. books you're a bad person Oh, I'm, 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 too I'm, I'm just like scribble all through it like a baby. 
the I, I noticed some guy on Twitter and he was talking about uh women and there is obviously this big thing where people are like really really angry at women nowadays like you've got the MGTOW guys and all this stuff and this guy on Twitter said the the way things work is that if you're a top 10% male you love women and you love their nature and you'd never want to change it and it's not that you could either because it favors you the the dark side of women's nature is that they aim high and they aim for the best and like it's almost like 10 women would have no problem sharing an alpha male whereas like one woman would have a serious problem sh sharing a, like having a beta male at all yeah and there is that side obviously there's the same dynamic in male um in males uh psyche and relationship to women like women men there's probably an ideal version of men that women like but obviously they, they like a masculine character you know they like a strong character but they obviously project quite a lot of negativity on them as well and both camps are doing this both genders are doing this and this is all to do with them projecting something onto it and it's all to do with this idea of projection and later on young talks about this a little bit more he says it's a it's a kind of if you wanted to make a model he says it's like a trifecta model so you've got the man and you've got the actual woman so the actual man and the actual woman and then the, the relationship between those two is the sort of effect of the anima so the the anima is the experience the man has of the woman that's what the anima is what he's trying to describe here the animus is the experience the woman has of the man so what the woman would see when she looks at the, at the man is like this masculine character so this is that type of archetype and what the man sees when he looks at the woman is the feminine character and then above that that's informing this is the archetype itself and this is separate from the two people and it exists outside of them it's so fucking crazy when you go into what he's actually saying here and you don't actually even perceive her per se you sort of get contents out of her and he'll, he'll go into this more specifically later on but the idea is that um if you have a bad relationship to that goddess if for example you have become MGTOW or red pilled or something like that and you believe that all women are evil so your anima the archetype you have modeled in your head or even unconsciously in your head or have been taught to see in your head is is some evil bitch living up in the in the sky that hates you every time you go to speak to another woman this will start to rain down in your psychology and then you won't even have a real experience of the woman you'll have a projected experience you won't see the woman for what she is you will see the 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 uh the, the evilness that is inherent in your anima thing so I, I think what you were trying to say there is that it is actually of incredible moral um precedence and young describes this as like so hard to do and most people won't even do it in their lifetime and this is why we're so unconsciously led by these forces why they're gods and why it's a destiny is that uh if you go in and say wait am i seeing a woman for what she actually is or do i have a bad conception of woman and then that's when you start to go into this idea of sorting out your anima of some sort and um i think this is what this guy on twitter was saying is that like you know if you're a top level guy in some sense and you accept women as they are you'll probably like it because it favors you to a large extent and then um, and then yeah it's so it's like resentment is a very big problem um yes 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 it's um so so you have to i guess step one of doing that is separate the person that you're looking at from woman womanhood womankind as such which would be the animus and vice versa for the, for the man itself it's, it's mm -hmm. like almost like your your perception of the person is informed by the god so so, so it's, it's, it's in, in a weird way it's like you're looking at the woman for example and and you're saying i don't know what to make of this i'm going i'm going to pray to the animal god and she's going to bestow upon me wisdom of how i should perceive this particular individual and that's actually terrifying but that's like a process that happens unconsciously and to, to bring it back to the fascination thing uh, this is something i wrote down and like I'm, I'm i'm kind of ragging on the migtow dudes a little bit here like i feel bad for that because like i, I get what they're doing on one sense but I, I do have to bully their psychology a little bit just to make sure that they've really considered their position and um this model i'm creating here where you've got the anima up in the sky the man the woman relationship i'm trying to wonder what young means by when he says consciousness is fascinated because the MGTOW dudes seem to be almost obsessed with women in a weird way. Do you know what I mean? Like of all things, they're like men going their own way. And what they do is they go on groups and define them. They define themselves by their, their antithesis towards 
feminine or the female. That's, that's also what atheists tend to do, which is fascinating to me. It's like, yeah. we all don't believe in God. So let's gather together and talk about how much we don't believe in God. So it's like they are talking about God constantly. So they are fascinated by the concept of God. Yeah, I think your spot's on there with the MGTOW thing. It's really weird. It's really weird when you think about it. So like, and consciousness is fascinated by it. So they're suffering from the, like the one thing that they hate, I think these MGTOW dudes, and this is a really fucking good point. Like, I don't think this is trivial. And I actually, I'm not trying to criticize them. I think they have this right. I think that in the modern world, like Instagram world, you know, women have it way too easy to get validated by a load of beta males. So they, they, they can just throw up some photos of them like half naked on Instagram and get flattered. And then that fulfills their ego. And, th and that's that plays to their worst nature, shall we say. And um, the MGTOW dudes are sort of saying, we need to stop validating them because it's destroying them. They're becoming entitled, narcissistic and all this shit. That's all good precedents. Like, they're all actually really interesting points that people should take more seriously. And it's making a lot of girls depressed, on the other hand. But then the problem is, is that the, the, the thing that these MGTOW dudes are complaining about is guys fascinated with women, pedestalizing women. And then these guys are like fascinated in the dark side. They're fascinated by women's power in society. They're like, women have too much power. They're like, oh, oh, I, I like, so it's, it's like that type of mood they're projecting onto it. They're, they're fascinated with women's disloyalty. So they're, they're almost like the archetype for most guys is quite simplistically sexualized. And they're fascinated with that. The MGTOW guys have got a, a negative, an evil female, a dark side feminine archetype, but they're still obsessed with it. And so it almost feels like the risk with MGTOW is that they could have a serious anima projection and it could be seriously negative. And that's something I guess I would push to that movement and say, make sure you've got that cleared up because like, I don't think that they're wrong, but I don't think that they're a hundred percent on the path or they're at risk for attracting people who are very, very damaged inside. Because if you think, here's another thing to think about. The MGTOW movement is coming up in a world where, first of all, like guys get rejected a lot and that's intense. Like getting rejected is painful. Like I was talking about approaching girls earlier. Like when you walk up to a girl and you're a little bit weird or you're a little bit off and she's like, ugh. And then you're like, oh my God. She just like, you know, she just owed me. That's just, it's hard. It hurts, but you get over it. But collectively, when you get like a lot of those, especially if you're like lower status and you get a lot of those, that charge builds up and that makes you like, if you don't deal with that psychologically well, that turns the anima into a monster because that's what she is. He's the ability to suck your fucking soul out your chest and you build up all this courage. You're like, Hey babe. And she's just like, Bleh. it's like sucks your soul out of your chest. And then, and then another thing to add to that is um, there's a lot of single mothers. And so single mothers are busy, you know, they work like three jobs and, that causes abandonment issues i'm sure like it's like i'm not getting enough attention from my mother and so you can see how maybe really deep in childhood all these young guys weren't really getting attention from mom because she was off working and so it turns into this thing that rejects you hates you disgusted with you and so your response is to reject it hate it and discuss it and that informs all your relationships with females it fundamentally informs your relationships with females where you reject them you hate them and you're disgusted with them and uh yeah i just attacked the MGTOW movement pretty hard no no that, that's absolutely fine it's like if i was to break up with you over these island lectures because i thought you were an idiot for example i was like i'm done with you we're not romantically involved anymore i'm going to leave you alone i would say that we would have a bad relationship you know that goes along with the idea of breaking up with somebody and for people who don't know MGTOW, mgtow stands for men going their own way you know and, and it's almost symbolically in the language it's like i'm going my own way i'm breaking up with you so it's like you implicit within that is a poor relationship with the anima so it's just yeah, implicit wow. within, within the damn words it's like i'm not having nothing to do with you anymore you're bad so it's like, it's like they they that's it and that's what jung's talking about it's like i'm fascinated by you but i don't like you <laughs> the ego doesn't like you. It's like, like, I, I, are you fascinated by your enemies? Yes, because you obsess over your enemies. It's the same thing with the shadow to some some degree. You know, when, when Jordan Peterson, for example, he <laughs> makes him sound completely insane, and maybe he is to some degree. But it's like I became so obsessed with atomic bombs, you know, da, 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 and I, I kept having apocalyptic dreams, and, and Hitler was in my dreams all the all the damn time. It's like, well, yeah, like you're fascinated by him, but you don't like him. You know, it's, like, it's, it's that, that same idea. I'm breaking up with you, but but I, I have to keep sort of checking my, my, my text to see if you're there, checking on your Instagram to see if you're there. I don't like you. Fucking die. 
you know it's yeah that's it that's it it's um obsession yeah no i have 100 agree it's, it's wild um yeah my man I, I think we should push on we'll get more into projections i i still have a lot to say on projections young talks about it a lot more in this next paragraph so i guess Very once nice. we get around about halfway through it I'll, yeah. I'll go into probably the most of what i've written here so uh, okay let's stop me when you get there because it's a long paragraph okay. here we go people as i said my good friends, it is easier to gain insight into the shadow than into the anima or animus. With the shadow, we have the advantage of being prepared in some sort by our education, which has always endeavoured to convince people that they are not 100% pure gold. So everyone immediately understands what is meant by shadow, inferior personality, etc. And if he has forgotten, his memory can easily be refreshed by a Sunday sermon, his wife, or the tax collector. <laughs> With the anima and animus, however, things are by no means so simple. Firstly, there is no moral education in this respect, except maybe today there might be. And secondly, most people are content to be self-righteous and prefer mutual vilification, if nothing worse, to the recognition of their projections. Yes, okay, that's that's where I was going. Cool. The, the idea of projection. So th this is this is a really hard idea. It, it it I find it very very hard to figure out what Jung means when he says projections. I think I'm modeling. I'm doing a decent job. I'm modeling it here, saying that you have this character, this archetype, and then you have the 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 relationship. But what what is forming between that relationship from the man's perspective is this sort of meta woman that he feels like he's speaking to, on top of the individual woman. And um, yes, <clears throat> there, there, there's this like, uh, there's this really funny meme by Pootie Pie where he's uh, he he's he called him Pootie Pie. That's adorable. Yeah, I love I love Pootie Pie. Like I actually binge watch him. I'm, I, he's my secret crush. Like I, I fucking love that dude. And yeah. uh, he he has this meme where he he's like all women a women are queen. So it's it's this idea of like we must respect women, and then all these memes pop up. Um, because it, it's 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 an anti meme to this whole. Uh, you could say the feminist agenda where they're saying that women are perfect. So th th I guess their anima in a weird way or the anima they're telling men to have is that women are literally angels that have never, you know, took a shit or anything like that. They're just unbelievably perfect. And they never do anything wrong. There's no evil side. The MGTOW guys are are like red pill to that. They're like, whoa, no, they've got an evil side, definitely. And then um, and there's all these memes then of like uh, really ironic things where I'll have to find some of them. Where, uh, for example, do you know that scene from Star Wars where they kill all the younglings? Oh yes, 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 yes. And so, uh, so it's it's the guy standing here, and that's like me, and then it's all the the younglings, and it's like wham, and, and then it's the lightsaber, and it's like respect, <laughs> 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 and it's all memes like that, like super ironic, and it's um, uh, it's it's fuck, I lost where I was going with that. It, it I'm, it's like getting into that idea <laughs> of by memes, respect women. Yeah, it's it's getting into an idea of these this idea, the meme, the super meme, the meta meme, is is creating the dynamics of the relationship almost more than the individuals are, especially when the individuals are not conscious of the metaphysics of the of the meta meme that's going on, which is a fucking crazy idea. Like, what does that even mean? And Jung talks about this a little bit more. He says that uh, the problem with women is that women project irrational opinions so this is irrational so instead of rationally communicating with two people about who they are you're you're irrationally communicating with the sort of meta meme of some sort so women have this problem where they um they will have irrational opinions and i was trying to think like what does he mean by that what does he mean the animus is doing and um in the red pill community, Rolo Tomasi talks about the hamster inside the woman's head. So since we've got this idea that the animus is like a, the logos, <coughs> Rolo has this idea of the hamster. So when a woman does something wrong, for example, she she's married and she fucks some alpha male and gets pregnant or something like that, she will rationalize that 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 that, that didn't happen, or there, there was she will justify it to herself, or she'll forget it of some sort. It's and 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 th this is interesting because. This is where this idea of a projection ties into the idea of illusion. So what she did in reality is she like cheated on her partner. She had sex with someone or like that. But in order to protect her ego, in order to not have her ego overwhelmed by her behavior, she will, the, the logo side of her, the, the theory, theorizing side of her, the animus in many ways will um, 
project the story over what happened. It will create a illusion for her that protects her. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, 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 certainly. And I found that I found that. I found that weird because that, that that's that's sort of playing into like how we're trying to figure out women, like we're trying to figure out what's going on with them. And in many ways, sex is easier for them. And so they will their problem is defending their their, shall we say, uh purity, I guess. That's that's traditionally what like a woman's nature would be all about. Is like they have to maintain value, whereas men have to create it in some sort. So so they have this situation where they will like do, you know, immoral things or they'll fuck the wrong guy or fuck too many guys or something like that. And so like a big thing for women I've noticed is like not being called a slut, which is so strange because like if I was like James you're such a slut, you'd be like, Yeah, I am. So it's maybe I am. Wink wink. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you're like say to any girl she'd be like what the fuck that's just what fuck you and especially oh, we, we, we could talk about evolutionary biology all day so people didn't know i am a biologist as part of my day job well this is what i find fascinating about it because i'm trying to i guess apply these concepts to evolutionary biology and it's like well how do we base the animus in female nature and the idea would be that Obviously, I said in an earlier one, first of all, the animus helps her model a strong male and test him. So when she's here and in this little trifecta, you've got the animus. So she's not seeing the man. She's seeing the ideal man. And she's, I guess, testing the man to make sure he's as strong as the ideal man. Yep. That's what the evolution because She doesn't want a weak. She doesn't want to get some creepy orc babies like she wants to make sure they're alpha babies. And so... um. But, but what the animus might do then is when she, in the more negative sense, is when she does something false, the animus might, the, the, the theorizing side of her might try to hide it from her, as I was saying. And it's something to do with shame, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. There, there's yeah. this, this sense that uh, the ego, it fundamentally comes down to this idea to protect the ego. The, the projection idea, what I'm getting at, is the idea of delusion or illusion. And I find that fascinating because Jung is trying to push this idea of our problems are about unconsciousness. And the real hard thing to, in order to model an anima or an animus correctly is it often involves you admitting to yourself why you're a weak little bitch. Like for a woman, it would be about admitting to herself, damn, I was a filthy slut. And for a man, it would be about him admitting to himself, oh, I was a, because it's a man is to do with irrational moods. A man is to do with feels, you know? And so, it will be the hard thing for a man would be i didn't approach that woman because women are e evil the reason why i didn't approach that woman is not because women are evil that was just a bullshit rationalization because i was too much of a coward and that's a shameful thing to admit to yourself and it's even more shameful when you spend 10 years telling yourself that shit and you've been saying to yourself all women are evil and then you wake up and you have to turn around and say to yourself you're just a coward and that's an emotional thing and that's that's really really hard to do mm. and um so what we do instead of confronting that hardest thing to do is confront ourselves with these deep emotions we throw out onto the world projections men might throw these cynical moods as i said <coughs> <coughs> if you're lower what say r.i.p i hope you die on air i'd get so much money from that the number of people who click <laughs> on this video and then i get access to your patreon you fucking evil bastard. I, I I would definitely not give you my PlayStation, you fuck. <laughs> I've got a PlayStation, um, mate. Three and four. <laughs> oh, so yeah, so you play video games, do you? What about all your tweets against They're them? a relic from the past. Yeah, Thank you very yeah, much. My yeah, fiance yeah. uses them. You're on them all day, man. So you are actually shadow projecting because I earn so much more money than you. And you're, and you're like, <laughs> you're like this, this guy's evil, but really it's, you're just a pathetic little bitch. How am I so much better dressed then? Like, how did that work? Excuse me. This, this is, this was like 70 pounds or something. It's, it's all right. You might, you might be the softest boy who has ever lived. Jesus Christ. Are you going to finish your train of yeah. thoughts or life so, uh, for you? Cause you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I'm very, I'm very, very close. Give me one second. <laughs> so, uh, so the idea of course is that the, and the thing that I found difficult is Jung would say women have irrational opinions. And I think it's, it's coming down to that idea that they, they would have a propensity towards self delusion intellectually because they have to in, uh, remain their ego integrity through stories. And it actually fundamentally to make it the base of an evolution is that they don't want to think that they're sluts fundamentally. So like when they do things that are anti-slut, they'll have to rationalize themselves that way. And they also want to test men and blah, 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 blah. 
men in a weird way they want to their, their problem is irrational moods and I, I was really confused about this i was like i i don't think i'm a moody bitch at all but then like when you kind of get down to it it's 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 more to do with this idea that women represent life and so if you have this negative opinion about life it's probably stem from the fact that life is not in your favor and instead of you accepting that you're not good enough therefore women is not like life is not flattering you that makes you and accepting that's your fault you become a cynic quite easily do, do you get what i'm saying here oh yeah so your your mood fundamentally is informed by your relationship to success in some way and in many ways as i was saying with that twitter guy earlier um when you're true alpha it's 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 more like positive in a more natural way do you get what i'm saying mm, mm, certainly I, i'd like to let you drop in the evolutionary biology thing here because this is where Sorry, this is where jung was um i mean he died in a, in the 60s i think didn't he? He, he you know a fairly long time ago before biology really took off because biology didn't really take off until well, structure of DNA was discovered in the, in the 50s, for example, so right when Yule was about to die, and then sort of took off from there. But in, in the evolutionary biology thing that, in terms of red pilling people, the slut shaming one is a really good one. You know, it's like, you know, in terms of saying that men and women have evolved to have different natures and different psychological regulations between not only with themselves and ones of the same sex as them, but ones of the opposite sex too. So it's like if a man is able to be a slut, that's a biological victory obviously because he's like here you go let me spread my seed to all these lovely women i get lots of lots of genetic investments where if a woman is is doing that you know she's sleeping with lots of men she's actually burdened for nine months per child and uh, that's a bad idea so so purely from from an evolutionary perspective a man who's a slut good woman is a slut is bad that's why women are the ones who sexually select in the, the you know that's why they're represented as nature as as um in mythology it's like i'm going to select the best possible man because technically that's what they've done they have been semi-sluts but generally if you're, if you're, you're a slut you're like a poor woman so that, that's that's very interesting but I'm, just the last line that jung said it was um what's what's the one uh so there's firstly there is no moral education with regards to understanding the the anima and animus and it's like i think and this is only a hypothesis of course i think that's because it's been implicit throughout evolution the idea of the true nature of men and the true nature of women has been implicit, so it's kept anima and animus in control. Whereas if, if someone goes incel and goes mad and their shadow possesses them, we're like, that's bad, we'll teach them against that. But anima and animus teaching has been in, implicit. It's like, this is the way men are, this is the way women are. We'll say traditional roles, for example. And, and and we've always seen woman as the way woman is meant to be and vice versa for men so, so now we've now we've gotten to the point and, and i wonder if this is, this is interesting now that we've reached the point of say political freedom for everybody so what's that going to do to our animal and animus like considering they are autonomous beings inside our heads it's like well now is the animal now free to to get revenge and get its own version of power is that what's going on inside our heads it's like well now suddenly we're, we're free we're no longer shackled by biology at least in the case of a woman so it's like maybe feminism for example, at least it's more radical political forms, is the anima as such attempting to get the upper ground, almost its own evolutionary war ground within our heads. You sort of see what I mean? That, that like now when yeah. now evolution has changed, the environment has changed. So maybe that's why people's inner psychology is out of whack, because it hasn't got the, the regulation of biology anymore. It's like anything can now go. So not only is that marked by a period of sort of intermittent chaos, but it's like whatever the dominant narrative is going to win and maybe that's going to be the goddess is now what we should be worshiping and so yeah, I mean, I, the, yeah, very 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 important and complex and deep and profound ideas that you just brought up there like honest to god um like first of all we, we I, like i'm mean, what we're going to try to do for the rest of this is establish that first principle that the anima exists separate to us which is just an unbelievably huge idea but what james i think is pushing here is the idea that what is that anima what is that goddess at the moment what are the collective symbols that are informing our experience of man and woman of the genders and the one astounding thing is that there's this sort of anti-nature uh first principle that's affecting all of this there's this some sense that no humans have a nature now that's a crazy idea that people are pushing but it's getting pushed nonetheless heavily almost all of our um academia is premised on this and i think it's wrong personally but i guess it's something we got to debate a little bit more i think it's wrong to push this stuff 
forward. But nonetheless, you can forget about that. What is happening right now is that the, uh, the, the animus, we could say the collective animus, is the patriarch ideal. It's an old, creepy white guy, you know what I mean? And then at a lower level, it's, it, seems to be, um, it seems to be shifting to, uh, like, I don't know, like what is Adonis? What is the beautiful, strong man? Do you know what I mean? Like who is mm. the, the great character? He's almost like a sports star or something. Something you know like that, I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that type of idea. And, uh, maybe maybe and like an Arnold Schwarzenegger type. And then there's that side. There's also like the bodybuilder types. And I, I guess like Instagram is the place to find that. It's like, what are most girls looking at there? Or what type of guys are they looking at? Or like the weekend is another one. Like he's, you know, the the, the laconic singer and he's super yeah. nihilistic as well. And so what's interesting is seeing these characters and seeing how they fill in and and um, seeing how people attach them and seeing which ones will win out the long term would be very interesting. Like, will the patriarch consolidate and will women like will this turn into a matriarchy will the patriarch ideal consolidate so deeply that it lowers its status compared to the goddess that's a that's an astounding idea because it's not that it couldn't happen but that would be so counter to human nature that we would literally have to destroy our nature in order to achieve that and people are assuming that would be a good thing but like how do we know destroying our nature would do us any good whatsoever so far all it's done is made everybody depressed that's pretty much it like it's it's not it's well, not. I, I like to butt, butt in quickly. Say like our nature, I don't think, has been destroyed yet, but it's been fundamentally changed by right. essentially technology to enable women to take their place alongside men. So, so it's like, I mean, forever the patriarchal idea, which is women find a certain type of man attractive, and that generally manifests itself in male power hierarchies for a variety of other reasons too but it's also conducive with women finding men in positions of power attractive now that women can take their place alongside men biologically it's like the nature of the, the the playground i suppose has changed so it's like why can't it be a matriarchy you know it's, it's like i'm not supporting oh, the well, idea it's, my... like, it's like playing with the idea it's like it's no wonder these ideas are coming forth because it's like well now the rules have changed why can't we do this you know, and then it's also my, resentment my against the system in there as well. So, so that plays it into it too. It's like, well, you know, the whole Marxist ideological, we've been oppressed for God knows how long. Maybe that ties into it too. So we're like, well, why can't this be a matriarchy? You know? um, my, my argument is actually that our, our, our biological nature has not changed at all. And there's an attempt to change it going on where we're trying to get people to take pills. The transgender thing is the first real movement to that. And it's a scary movement because like people don't take this seriously how big of a philosophical idea it is. Is like you can be born a man and you can you can take technology to change yourself into a female. So you can feel female and and do that. That's crazy. Like that and I, I don't mean that in a like putting down way i just mean that that's actually insane like it's 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 going against nature it's it's not normal it's different it's weird it's crazy and we don't know what that could mean and there's there's many instances of people going trans and then regretting it and after cutting off their dicks and stuff and not knowing what to do about it so it's it's a really intense idea but that's premised on the idea that we need to dis we need to defeat biology we need to free people to be whatever their imaginations imagine but the problem underneath that is that why do you think that you want to be something other than your nature? Jung, I think, is pushing the idea that fundamentally when you get back to it, you just want to be what you are. That's the whole thing you were searching for all in the end. A woman, in the end, is only ever going to want to be a woman. And a man is only ever going to want to be a man. And then the individuation process, as it grows, might have some exceptions, but they're rare. They're not the rule. And um, the thing I think you're talking about there is that the society we've built on top of that is unnatural. And that's a big problem because our nature is the same, but the social system we've built on top of it does not play into our nature. Well, so the, the most recent is unnatural. So we'll say since since the, the pill and technology that's yeah. enabled women, that's the unnatural part, yes. And so what's the, what's weird about that is now we're playing catch up. Now, we're, now our nature is now in a position of compromise. It's a problem. And so now we're trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. And the solution is twofold. It's like either like we're going to keep blaming traditional nature, which was the patriarchy, or we're going to change the square peg, the round peg. You know, we're going to change it into what it needs to be using technology, just like DNA editing and all that shit and, and pills and all that stuff. And it's it's they're just crazy ideas. They're, it's 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 pretty much saying that nature's not good enough. 
and we need to change it. And and that's that's a really cynical idea. It's a really cynical idea. And I, I guess what I'm trying to push for it here is that one thing I was saying earlier is that men, I think, fundamentally project their opinion onto the world, their mood onto the world. They like they can rationalize all they want, but fundamentally their their feeling of the world would be dictated by their relationship to life and life being the mother anima. And if life was good to them, if the mother was caring, they'll feel that life is a loving place. If the mother, if women were were accepting and not rejecting over overtly, they will think that life is a, 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 a they'll be confident, you know, they'll be strong and all that. Like having a lot of sex is a, fe- a healing effect on a young man's mind. It's crazy. <clears throat> and uh, it's like, so th- that, that gives it, that's a positive loop. But if you have a negative loop, you will, uh, you will, you will you will build up this distrust towards life you'll build up this hate towards life you'll build up this desire to defeat life you'll build up this desire to 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 walk away from life and this is going to be a weird idea but it, like almost in our modern worlds and our modern systems our modern patriarchy if you will the men that are winning aren't the alpha males it's it's the traditional alpha males it's the beta males you know what i mean like you got zuckerberg up there he's like a creepy tech nerd and he's like a fantastic genius, but creepy tech nerd all the way. And you kind of get the feeling that like a lot of what he says, like he's a soy boy, you know, a lot of what he says is very tinged with negativity. And um, like it, it is this idea that we need to fix something, that there's something wrong with the way we are. And everybody's out to try save the fucking world or some shit like that. And um, and, and there is that strange sensation that there is a, a underneath it all. There's this negative mood towards our nature. And that is actually a re- revolution, not against men, but against mother nature. So on one side, you've got the beta males trying to change mother nature, trying to defeat the anima, trying to defeat life who never loved them. And then the other end, you've got the rejected females trying to defeat the patriarchy, the society that never loved them or was mean to them or something like that. And it's the father that never gave them attention. So uh, yeah. Yeah, so, 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 no, yeah, so summing that up, I guess, collectively, we have a very poor relationship with our image of man and woman. So, and this, this becomes so obvious is that if you mention anything to do with gender relations or gender politics to anyone, they immediately go, Boom. yeah, because not only do they have yeah. no idea what their relationship is or should be, you know, it's as if their personal relationship is not aligned with what the collective should be. And that's very, very strange. And considering yeah. these are, you know, man and woman, regardless of what people these days like to think, it's like they are fundamental categories of biology. We are a sexually oh, yeah. dimorphic species. There is zero way around that whatsoever. And I think you're absolutely spot on when you say the transgender thing is not simply a case of, of like social rights. It's, it's deeper. It's like it's. And, and this isn't necessarily good or bad, of course. It's like it's an assault on the category of men and women that they're not. First of all, they're not absolute which is a really big deal, a massively big deal, because then if there's oppression that comes with those categories, why shouldn't we just do away with them, right? That, that, that's, that's, and it is a good question, and it, it's, it's difficult to throw away. It's like, if biology is oppressing us, why can't we do away with biology? You know, what's the downside yeah. of that? And, and, and that's, that's, it's a very good argument, and that's what they're doing. It's, it's not like, you know, transgenderism is, um, we need to respect these people's individual rights that that's the surface that's the mask that's the persona to what's going on yeah, it's like definitely it's, it's 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 an assault on the category of men and women it's like if this is one of the most fundamental one of the biggest narratives that has been pushed for the last couple of years with i guess the poster boy poster girl poster person being uh, <laughs> being caitlin jenner you know it's like suddenly this deity comes out it's this this man who has yeah. conceded and, and become a woman you and know woman of the year and one so a man she was the anima. She was the anima that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Woman of the year. You know, it's, it's like, what does that mean for our collective relationship with the anima and animus? What are they doing up here to each other? And what what are we feeding into them? What are they feeding down into us? It's like considering that that men and women are fundamental categories and are essential to the continuation of the species. It's well, we'll we can say we're in deep shit, I suppose. That there's there's a lot to pass out, and you know you, you take the MGTOW guys, and they're like, I'm not having anything to do with women ever. It's like, well, okay, that's evolutionary, not evolutionary, not viable. So if you take the feminist or the radical feminist myth, because that word is so diluted, I don't even want to like to use it. The radical feminist myth, it's like you'd also have no reason to 
breed you know we, we we did a video on vegan gains more or less before and it's like it's like it's, it, he's, he's an interesting character that's appeared in the culture because he's so anti-children you know the anti-natalist idea it's like and why wouldn't you be it's, it's like what what what's the end result of a poor relationship between a man and a woman it's like well you don't have children it's an evolutionary dead end so it's like collectively speaking we're going down a dead end and that's not very nice it's, it's not um, very nice people and this is where it gets even more interesting is that like uh, so these these the god and the goddess you know or aries and aphrodite uh, whatever the fuck you want to call them like the the divine couple th it's not like these are actually pushing these ideas the contents that come off them are not the same as the archetypes themselves the archetypes are so anonymous they're actually so unconscious that to in order to perceive them in their fullness you'd have to see all angles of this you'd have to see them from the MGTOW side and also see them from the alpha male side you'd have to see all sides of that shit to see, you, to see the man as it is you'd have to see why he's a tyrant and the feminists hate him but also why Jordan Peterson is like quite happy to bow down and prostrate and say it's not obvious that you're devil like it's so great and and to, to see that is to see the, 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 the archetype in its full spectrum and that's that's, that's a really interesting problem because what seems to be going on is it's not that the anima and the animus or the, the god and the goddess are in some weird conflict. We don't know if that's the case because we haven't dug deep enough. What seems to be happening is that, shall we say, that the leadership or the cultural zeitgeist is focused on a particular projection coming off that. And so the neurosis is in us which is fucking interesting because the neurosis from these projections, as I described earlier, is always based in an inability for us to face our own ego, for us to project our shame back onto ourselves and say, this is why we're not good enough. Our inability to accept, okay, life didn't accept me because I wasn't good enough. I didn't raise to its standards. The inability for the woman likewise to do the same. It's, it's like it, this type of things. So it's like, uh, it's very interesting that the one thing I see uniting all this is a, a willingness to deny the ego. And that is also tied into this willingness, this desire to deny nature. And it's it's very scary the way that's going because it's not that's not going to be pretty the way it sorts itself out, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it's like a collective sense of the ego being assimilated by the collective unconscious, which which yeah. is in itself a form of unconsciousness, you know, and that's that is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. It's not that it's not you know, the Greeks, whatever, would have looked at it as the, you know, the pantheon of gods are fighting it out. And, you know, that, that's a valid interpretation of it. But it is, it's like our relationship with the anima and animus is frequently toxic amongst the population. And depending on the nature of that toxicity, you form a particular camp, you know, be that the MGTOW, be that the 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 radical feminist types, you know, and, and as, as you said, it's, it, you're absolutely right. The neurosis is in you. It's your relationship with the anima and animus, your ego's relationship. And that's that fascination idea as well. It's because gender politics is everywhere. It's the fascination. Our collective ego, I suppose, which is like a nonsensical term, but all, most of our egos, if you add them all up, are absolutely fascinated by this. And, and, and because most of the time it's a toxic relationship. It's like, what would the optimum relationship look like? You know, and then it's like, well, you'd get into trouble for saying so i think in in, in today's world that's what's really weird it's, it's what's really weird about it and like this is where it gets even weird i guess we can get into the paganism thing slightly here is that uh you have the anima and the an animus you have the god and the goddess and they're almost like the 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 yin and yang masculine feminine powers and they're actually so abstract and young claims they're actually real like they're they're real autonomous separate from us but they're so abstract that um, we don't even get to perceive them directly. It's almost like the pagan worldview perceives the projections. So you'd have like Aphrodite, that's one projection of the anima. You'd have uh, Hecate, that's another projection of the anima. You'd have Sophia, that's another projection of the anima. You have Medusa, the devouring mother, that's another projection of the anima. They're coming off this super force. So now you have a, a, a hierarchy of gods or a not even a hierarchy, a, a layer of gods that are coming down which is fucking crazy. Like that's utterly insane because then the drama that you can bring to life is the sort of projections. And that's almost all you can see. I think Jung does say later on that it's, it's, that's pretty much as far as most people are ever going to go. Like to go further is to risk insanity or almost guarantee it or something like that, mm. which is just an amazing idea. And then um, I guess what, what seems to be going on right now in the world 
is as you said uh yeah like uh, some strange type of conflict where it's like what is the right way to do what is the right way to balance those masculine and feminine forces and maybe it's more about getting based based mm, well yeah. this, this is where i like individualism i'm trying to keep my own stuff out of it but it's like um i think it was edward edinger one of the leading jungian scholars i don't know if he's dead yet actually but he's, he's a crusty old man no i think he's alive um, but he's he's, 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 he's a very crusty old man um, very, very nice man though. He did a lecture series on, on Ion as well, like yeah. 20 years ago, I think. Um, but he said that individuation was, was the myth of the modern man. So yeah, that's, I, that's absolutely fascinating. It's like, well, maybe the solution isn't the geopolitical. Maybe the solution isn't to call up your local radio station and, and have a go at people because you perceive womankind as such to have this role. It's like, maybe you should go inside yourself. And, you know, you, he's fairly abstract in this, but Jung's psychotherapeutic practice does provide some indications as to how you can do this. You know, fix your own relationship and figure out exactly what your projections are. You know, mm -hmm. is is that what's actually real or is it a projection? That's how I deal with the anima and animus. It's like, they're the projection making factor. You know, it's, 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 it's like, it, this is like a bit of me that you can see. There you go. And, um, that's all I have to say on this particular topic because we've run for an hour on one page of Ion. So uh, uh, I, there's one, there's so much more I want to say about this. There's there's one thing I wanted to say there. Uh, fuck, I lost it a little bit. Yes, the the dark side of individualism is something that people I don't think talk about enough. Is that uh, in this world where individualism is actually of premier, it's the century of the self, as some guy who said, um, and you wouldn't think it is, but it actually is. <clears throat> um one of the dark sides of that is that you get to you get told constantly that you can be whatever you want to be and one of the dark sides of that is that you get situations where people deny the fundamental tyranny of being what you want to be which is your nature your nature restricts you to what you are whereas the, the egotism or individualism i want to be an, a super individualism the most individual you can ever be is to defeat your own nature i am so individual i'm not even human and that's where you're getting into the satanic archetype. That's that's sort well, of is, is that implicit in individualism, or is it the modern toxic brand of individualism? So it's a would, literature issue. I would, I would say if we say individualism is like the centered on the archetype of the self, it's one of the projections, one of the yeah. dark projections. And then obviously there's a fucking brilliant bright projection of it. Like, you know, to, you know, become a person with a soul. Like that's that's just the most important thing. But on the dark side of it is like it, it it is the satanic we're actually getting into the ion problems become a person with a soul is christ and the satanic yeah. side of it is like defeat everything about life and become yeah uh, they become this obsessed arrogant monster like yeah, the, the, Satan. in which case if that's the case you've just laid out the the conflict for the next ion which which is you know the christ integrating his shadow it's like the two sides of individualism coming together that's fascinating it's absolutely yeah. fascinating and and the you know what's crazy about that is that the the conflict seems to be stemming around the idea of nature. Like, are uh, I see these transgenderisms and transhumanisms and all that stuff. That what they seem to be trying to do is they're positing. I was talking to Garrett about this. They're positing that evil or the problem, tyranny, whatever you want to call it, is is our nature, and it's in our body, and our minds are trapped. And we need to liberate our minds so that we can manifest our potential fully. <clears throat> that involves a fundamental distrust towards femininity, towards the great mother, yep. towards mother nature. It says, mother nature, you're not good enough. It, like Christ says, if you, and Jung, Jung and Christ say, if you manifest the ultimate highest form of your nature, it will be better than anything because God made it. That's the fundamental idea there. But this other idea is the dark side of that, where nature is evil and we must defeat it because our reason is better. And that's that's to say that mother is evil and we must become ourselves because I am better than whatever that is. And do you know what's so interesting about that? Because that involves a distrust towards the femininity. Do you know what's so interesting about that is feminism is fundamentally premised on not liking women. It's not pre premised on liking women. Yeah. It's it's premised on not liking women. It's premised on making women into men. That's all it is. And that's a fucking crazy yeah, idea. Yeah, and that is actually a switch up of the whole thing. It's like if if biology is evil, you know, and we have we have to suppress biology. Biology is mother nature. It's also the devouring mother too. You know, it's it's, it's the good one. Yes, yes. And, and, and oh, it's a monster. It's a but, monster. But, but, it's, but it's still femininity as such. 
So, so it's like it is it is a rejection of femininity because because the 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 feminist types aren't feminine, they're masculine. Yes, that's yeah. that's very interesting. You know, so, yeah, and so it shouldn't be called feminist at all. It should be called the death of feminist, or whatever it should be. You know, the, the, and it's no wonder why they think that because it's like, well, women by suppressing biology through technology, like the birth control pill, like they can now take their place alongside men. So it's like they're in a masculine world. You know, there's there's not much call to make it more feminine. There, there is a little bit, but there's not much call to make it so that rather than hard work being given value in a patriarchal system for example a capitalist system sorry it would actually be emotions and feeling so so it's like rather than than than, than logos being rewarded it would be eros being rewarded which is exactly what the anima animus problem is with the anima being eros within the man so that's a that's a very interesting problem to pass out so maybe it's not the anima that's the issue it's the animus that's the issue and it, it seems to be the case but but it's, it's almost like the patriarchy good we take our place in the patriarchy rather than patriarchy bad yeah. I, it's hard to know it's hard to know because i think i think what's going on to, to some extent is that you, we have this male female archetypes and the male archetype is god or the tyrant we could say mm. and then the female archetype is the goddess or devouring mother nature who's a brutal bitch and like both of those are real it's the the dynamism of the archetypes it's it's the spectrum the the, the black and the, the yin and the yang of the archetypes but it's almost like we've we've made both of them one dimensional so we've blocked out two sides so instead of yes. god we have god is dead and instead we have only patriarchal tyrant and instead of having um evil mother nature that is dangerous bitch we have a goddess who can do nothing wrong with no dark side whatsoever and so what we have is tyrant patriarch beautiful goddess and we lack the other two and but, so but, but then but also implicit in that there is a little bit of the, of the devouring mother nature though because you have to suppress biology it's like biology bad human nature bad unless it's two different variations subtle variations of the myth in in different sects of the population do you know what i mean oh but that's interesting yeah like oh fuck you just so, so, so it's also the masculine one is definitely definitely as you said it's like it's just tyrant masculine nature itself is bad but then at the same time women are trying to act in the masculine nature because the feminine nature is bad it's almost like it becomes a weird paradox yeah yeah it's, it's the paradox is the key of it because these two sides that are denied still exist and are super powerful but they're just in denial yeah so i guess the thing is that we do is we blame the problems of our nature not on mother nature on the goddess we blame it on the patriarchy which is retarded because it's that's not the source of the problem and then likewise blah 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 we think the solution is in the patriarchy it's the solution is here oh yeah we, so, we blame biological oppression on the patriarchy all the time you know women yeah, we only behave like women because of the patriarchy telling them to to keep them in line so what they've done is they've taken fundamental female nature blamed that that, that, that the patriarchy is the one that's caused that so they've taken all of biology and then they placed over the top culture or, or, or the evil tyrant king and that way they can attack biology but through the mask it's not going to work but it's almost like that's the way their minds look at it you know that's the ideological viewpoint it's it's like one-sided to each each way good or bad you know and you don't yeah. see the bad sides to either including the individual actually which is interesting because as you've got the male and the female and it's like that manifests in the individual which is christ and satan at the same time is fantastic so you have a little bit of satan inside of you we've we've been going it for over an hour i think we should wrap this up so okay well i board. i think i think we should read to the end of that paragraph to say the least and then we've got a lot of questions so oh sweet okay all right uh, if anybody's got questions please write them in the chats now and we will answer them afterwards we're going to just read through this last chunk now cool thank you very um, much indeed it seems a very natural state of affairs for men to have irrational moods and women irrational opinions ah, yeah. presumably this situation is grounded on instinct and must remain as it is to ensure that the empedlocleen he's a, he's an old greek man uh, game of the hate and love of all the elements shall continue for all eternity nature is conservative and does not easily allow her courses to be altered she defends in the most stubborn way the inviolability of of the preserves where anima and animus roam hence it is much more difficult to become conscious of one's anima slash animus projections than to acknowledge one's shadow side one has of course to overcome certain moral obstacles such as vanity ambition 
conceit, resentment, etc. But in the case of projections, all sorts of purely intellectual difficulties are added, quite apart from the content of the projection, which one simply doesn't know how to cope with. And on top of all this, there arises a profound doubt as to whether one is not meddling too much with nature's business by prodding into consciousness things which it would have been better to leave asleep. Dun, dun. There's so much in there, man. I, I'm i actually going to only pull up one thing, and I think we should riff off that and then call uh, close it off with questions, all right? So um, one has, of course, to overcome certain moral obstacles, such as vanity, ambition, conceit, resentment, etc. Mm. I think the idea of moral obstacles is an astounding idea, an astounding idea, because... And this is why, and I'm going to tell you, we live in an age of moral relativism. I think this, in many ways, is a quite a damning throw at Nietzsche's conception. We live in an age of moral relativism where we don't think that there are objective morals. Okay, And what Jung is proposing here is that in order to achieve maximum psychological potential so as i said before you've got your your problem where you've got your nature and you have to try deal with the fact that your nature is kind of chaotic there's something wrong and so some people are like right what i'm going to do is i'm going to intellectualize and change it with technology and stuff like that Jung says what you have to do is you have to build your psychology so he says build a mindset in many ways and he says that the obstacles <clears throat> or the the tools in many ways the 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 paths the, the the way that you get to a your highest potential is actually moral that's what he means by moral so for example the shadow involves you having to be humble that's a virtue that's that's a moral that's it's a psychological attitude that's a crazy fucking idea because Jung is giving this a very based way of looking at morality as actually pragmatically real like he's almost making it at the very least object or pragmatic maybe even objective to an extent is that everybody who deploys humility with their psychology will see advancements in the quality of their psychology and will lead to a higher level and that's that's a quite that's quite moral base for why things like virtues and whatnot would have appeared. Like all of these ones that he lists, vanity, ambition, conceit, resentment. Like you're, you're like, uh, wouldn't it be easier just to be like a super arrogant badass that like wins at everything? And, and Jung is sort of saying that you don't become a winner unless you deploy these emotions in your favor. You, unless you take these moral efforts to understand why you're wrong, why you might fail, your weak sides and all that. The, the the tools that you need to conquer your unconscious will make you a great person and therefore why don't we deify these tools and i think jung is suggesting that in the past we did only unconsciously the virtues of christianity for example may have been the deifications of psychological tools that help us defeat the world or defeat ourselves or defeat our nature no not even defeat tools to deal with our nature to ennobleize it and whatnot i think that is a super interesting idea i think people sh i think this is fundamentally what young is trying to say and uh and a lot of what i'm pushing out here when when we're talking about you know becoming a juicy young man is that like young has been stolen a little bit by people who don't really get what he's trying to say he's trying to say that you you have a nature and the game is to try win or to to, to master or or craft that nature into its most powerful type by using these moral tools and whatnot so um yeah, that was that was my riff, James. Mm, yeah, this is absolutely fascinating because, you know, Christianity is a very mysterious thing. It, it, it could be that there is a metaphysical reality and there is the Christian God who's listening to our prayers, whatever the nature of that may happen to be. We don't know. I don't know. And that would that would be, you know, as Jung said at the beginning of this book, you'd be, you'd be stepping out of line. Right? He has no business doing that. He might in his private life. You know, who, who knows? But what we can say about Christianity is it is an evolved system of beliefs which allow us to live harmoniously together across time. So it's almost a pragmatic philosophy of the unconscious, which is really fascinating. It's like there's nothing to throw away. So when he talks about moral effort, it's like, OK, what does moral effort mean? You know, what, what is morality? And it's like, well, a good way to conceptualize it is this idea of there is a goal and there is good and there is evil. And it's like, I guess the goal is to do good. And in the Christian worldview, the hypothesis is, and I think this is correct, at least, at least fundamentally, is if we all acted like Christ, 
that if we all adopted these virtues, for example, and he listed some of them, uh, vanity, ambition, conceit, resentment, so overcome overcome these false gods, we'll say, then we'll all live in a stable society together across a very long period of time. And that's actually reflected in the individuation process. So whereas, whereas the individual goes on his process and of practicing virtue, overcoming evil, being moral, we'll say, that actually affects the entire society. And that's, that's, that's a terrifying idea because it makes you the center of the world. That's why the kingdom of God is within you. That's why Christ is in you, which is really, really interesting. So I think that's one of the things he's getting at here is basically a scientific proof of the pragmatism of Christianity. Or not even necessarily Christianity, obviously, this context of this book, but, but that particular process of exerting moral efforts to make yourself a more psychically healthy, stable person to keep those projections under control is the exact same idea played out in your own mind, the exact same idea as the as the Christian collective of we're going to be moral together to overcome the metaphysical evil. It's just exactly the same thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just played out at different levels. So he, he's, he's created a proof for Christianity in a way, at least on the pragmatic end. Um, we uh, like, like, like we we could go down that rabbit hole and and go all the way to the end, and you do go to metaphysical places, and it becomes incredibly compelling. It just it's it's amazing. This is what this book is just so mind blowing and fucking frightening as well, because we're talking about a a evil force in the metaphysic that has a lot of power and a lot of sway over this world, but fundamentally um you, you're right like it's such an interesting idea that the you have that nature and in order for you to if for you to redeem that nature and turn it into its most profound and powerful manifestation uh, is a gift to society and sorts out all the world's problems if you can get enough people to do it that's a fucking amazing idea and like it is the foundation of individualism and what's fascinating is that's considered a moral endeavor it's the idea of morality and the traditional Christian morals are what you need to do that, you could say. Maybe not Christian per se, but generally we say traditional morals per se. Just having a moral code, which seems to work. What's fascinating is that we have in this other camp and what's, get, what's getting pushed a lot in this modern world is that we don't have a nature and therefore we don't need to have a moral compass in order to deal with our nature. Instead, we're free to do whatever we want. And the only thing is, that is restricting us is our lack of technology in some way. And uh, and that's a that's a really interesting idea because the idea is that our, our creations are going to save us, our creations are going to redeem us. So we, we've got this problem where we're like, oh, I want to be a girl, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these surgeries and take all these pills, and that's going to change me into the that's going to redeem me into the form that I want. That's that fundamental cathartic transformation. That's the resurrection. That's the redemption that I want, and it's going to be achieved this way. And the thing is, is that there's no moral conquest there. And so in many ways, it's amoral. In many ways, you could even push the idea of satanic in it. Like that's what they would have meant when they say the word satanic. And, and this is why I think it's worrying to see the world so vi viscerally jump into these things without any hesitation. We don't really know the dangers of what we're doing because we're denying psychology, human nature, mother nature, metaphysics, all this crazy stuff. And leaping forward into the pedestal of progress, and who fucking knows where that's going to go. Right. But anyway, yeah. next right. week. Just, we're throwing just one one quick line. It's like <laughs> we'll never our, end. Our our collective myth is moving from Christianity to Faust. Is, yes. is what a lot what a lot of this is is doing. So whether or not it's um, a sinister conspiracy by the elites, or if it's just a natural thing that's occurring within our, our unconscious but it reminds me when you were saying like we need technology to transcend i have to of course end with the flat earth, <laughs> and, the, and, and the flat earth myth will say you know there is the earth and there is the dome over the earth and what the elites are trying to do is use technology to break out of the earth which is essentially reach transcendence so yeah. we need, we need yeah. technology to reach transcendence which is fascinating and technology is fundamentally a faustian endeavor created by the by the scientific process trying to build ourselves up from paradise lost up up to the transcendent so i thought i'd just drop the flat earth bomb in there because we have to. Uh, well and uh, see that's a really interesting idea is that in order to reach the the cosmic world the world of the gods we need to build a tech that can break us out of this fallen world but the counter 
ideal that no one believes in anymore because no one believes in spirituality or metaphysics is that if you can redeem yourself through this moral endeavor to a high enough level like christ did or buddha even it happens mm. conscious it happens in your consciousness and so the path is counterintuitive that's a fucking astounding idea that people don't take serious enough because that means that you don't need technology you don't need anything and if you don't need anything to do this bar your psychology no one can ever take that away from you whereas your technology can be taken away from you no bother you do not own it it's just lumps of shit that lie around that you'd form into stuff and i'm not saying technology is bad it's neutral but the moral energy you apply to it is determines its madness Fucking yes. preaching, boys! Right, <laughs> two two chisel jawed boyos just fi fi figured everything out. So that's our yep. crack. See, so see what happens when we're well dressed. We fucking sort all the shit out in the world. It's fucking good shit. I'm gonna read a couple of these questions for um. Let's go for it. If there are any mean comments directed at me, I'd like you to read them out to you so I can respond personally. Who's that fucking British prick? I hate. Oh no, sorry, that was that was the one I wrote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the stallion definitely has memeable potential. The stallion. Remember, we talked about the stallion at the very start. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the stallion does have me. He's like. I, I, uh, I agree. I agree. Okay, here's one sort of directed at you. It's like lol. <laughs> he watches Carl, and then it's spelt Sargoon. Carl Sargoon. The Sargoon of Akkad. Oh right, yes, of course um carl benjamin what's your what's your thoughts on that james think it's oh, I, so first of all i don't watch sargon of, of a cad because sargon's videos are too long for me to fit into my busy day so i'm, I'm aware of, of the sargon controversy regarding patreon which is why i brought that up so and, and i find it fascinating that the patreon's about to collapse more or less if, if peterson and rubin build their own competitor then they could potentially collapse patreon so there you go, and it's all and it's all hinged on some kind of moral effort. It it seems some kind of moral effort. I wonder, I wonder, will um, Jordan allow bloody postmodernists onto his new platform? Well, that's very interesting. Probably not, I would say. Because, what he wants? Uh, well, no, because he, he he wants to discourage people from going into those particular fields. He created his own website, or or he yeah, it was in plans, wasn't it? To be like, you need to drop out, you need to not go to school, not do this. So it'd be very interesting to see if he gives a platform to, to the bloody postmodernists. Well, see, if he doesn't, I don't think I'd support it. Well, he didn't, didn't give a platform to Faith Goldie. Or Faith, yeah, so I, I can't remember the name because you know, too right wing. So, well, that's interesting. I, my stance with Jordan would be like, ultimate free speech, anything goes, like, or else you're just a cook like everybody else, dude. Yeah, like, I, I agree. That. I definitely agree. Okay, here we go. Um, I don't think that the id, ego, or super ego are an accurate portrayal of personality. MGTOWs are pleb tier. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, some MGTOWs are in, interested in gaining females. Gaming females. Yeah, that's really weird. It's oh, like they, okay, they, wait, wait. They, we got we, we just, for into account. We just okay. got a comment on Patreon. Patreon isn't the platform or the payment processors, but the ah, uh, Patreon isn't the problem or the payment processors, but the banks. Yeah, that's dirty. Uh, yes, if you want to go down that. Yeah, okay. So what, whatever the power structure at B, then. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll say. Uh, this is this is a big problem. I noticed this with Gab as well. Is that uh uh, t -t 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 uh gab was uh uh tried to do something like you know they tried to set up their own fucking social media account and then uh a load of i think verizon might have said you can't use our internet like yeah. the cables and shit like that and you're like oh wow this isn't a fair game at all holy shit so uh, whoever owns the infrastructure decides and i guess this plays into what we were saying earlier is that it seems like the people who own the inf infrastructure here's a conspiracy for you are loaded like nerdy tech beta males that uh like got rejected by women so now they sort of hate women or, and are promoting feminism and some weird type of anti-nature anti-life nihilistic reality this is causing all of our problems and everybody's turning transgender bang i said it all right alex jones call me up let's do info wars it's done here we go god jesus christ i've got nothing to say then um, I don't think that id, ego, or super ego are an accurate portrayal of uh, personality or an accurate portrayal of personality so that's a dig at Freud MGTOWs are pleb tier, I love that sure. also some MGTOWs are interested in gaming females 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Freud's conception is just a lower resolution version of um, Jung's. That's it. So it, it's it's correct. It's just too low resolution. So the superego essentially would be the collective unconscious, as well as the it sort of combined together in kind of like a like a strange way. But the ego is the same idea. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I think um, accurate is is a fair word to use there because it's not. It's. I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't think it's specific enough. It's very reductionist Freud's thing is that like, we're literally just like a dick with like this set of morals and then this like self-interested fucking personality trying to sort those things out. Um, I do think Jung does a better job. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a resolution issue. It's like, well, Freud came first and Freud did a pretty good job. And then Jung sort of expanded and was like, yeah, too shallow. I, do you know what I find interesting is that Jesus woof. Uh, that people haven't um people haven't uh come up in a new model. Like it seems like it ended at young, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, so I really like the great men idea of history. Ralph Waldo Emerson talked about this, where it's like history doesn't and this is quite a I guess a pagan power structure idea, quite a Nietzsche idea, where it's like history and ideas and advancements will cluster around specific elite individuals. So that, that actually seems so, so psychology actually got a few of them. Psychology's not been around very long. They've had Freud, who actually made it into the damn Western canon. It's like he's, he's one, like one of the most recent people. And then you had Jung in there too. And it's like those those two seem to, to hit it. And then no one has been able to reach his level to continue it. So it's like, how the hell do you continue? That? Apart from us, of course, because we're updating for the modern world. Yes, but how, how the hell are you meant to continue that unless you are some kind of god-tier genius? If Jung had to understand all the previous philosophers to understand it, the next person along in this age of distraction has to understand all the previous philosophers plus Jung completely. It's like the, the, the closest we have at the moment in the public eye who does nowhere near to the level of Jung would be a Peterson character. It's yeah. like people consider him to be the, I guess, a, a small deity in the culture. He's like the wise old man type, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he's he is not nowhere near there yet. Yeah, he he is actually on that level, but like, I don't. I think history will show him not to be quite as prominent as we see him now. I think he's just a hit on. Like he's so based that he he is so jarring to the common culture, and he's so articulate and well based in science that people find it very hard to like beat him i guess you could say he doesn't put forward new ideas like young does he's a synthesizer he's an experience. I, I will, he's a teacher i will agree that yeah he doesn't seem to forward front much new stuff at all like um he more puts it together very very well like he sees things that other people couldn't um but something i had to say about young I, I do think an interesting thing about i guess young and freud is that as i said all of their work is first principles in the idea of human nature and since around about their time like young died in the 60s the 60s was like that was the end of human nature it became blank slate theory and that was everything after that mm. um okay so migtows and pickup artists have you heard the trend that many many of the pickup artists the guys who go out and they try to fuck women to try to seduce women they have turned into migtows have you heard that um no i haven't i thought yeah, two, but... I, you would think the two would be at odds with each other considering it's men going their own way are you going to no, say there's... they're only using women for a particular service to themselves and that's it there, there is quite a few of them that are switching from uh from being pickup artists into being migtails that's very strange i guess yeah. is that because random sex with random people isn't gratifying like color me shocked i <laughs> I, I have no idea like some of them for example uh, like one of them one of the guys i saw talking about it uh said uh he got a little he got a, he got an std and he didn't know about it it was like gonorrhea it was like bacteria it wasn't anything serious you know and he gave it to like three girls before he got the results back and then he felt really ashamed so he said i'm never gonna have sex again or something like that or like i'm not gonna you know have a lot of sex from now on and uh stuff like that's going on yeah, it's like a weird form of moral guilt. It's almost like a feminist moral guilt. Something like that. It's what the it's feminist like, wanted. Is it prominent enough to be worthy of note? Or is it just like a Maybe few isolated incidents? Maybe not. I, I have heard of it, though. I have heard that it's in the woodwork that, uh, that you're getting these... Like, I think the thing that happens with pickup guys is that they go in this, this binge and then they get like the power over women that they've always wanted. You know, like that's the sort of idea. Like it's like you're decrepit, nah, and then you like get get the power to seduce. You become a man of 
sex worthy demand a juicy chiseled jaw boyo like yourself and myself yeah like me i mean i've yeah <laughs> <laughs> you going there <laughs> and then uh and then what happens is yeah you get access to a lot of girls and then something weird happens some of them describe it where they get a little bit jaded because uh, like there's one guy i follow called todd valentine and he said that he's often slept with girls and then he'd lie in bed with them and uh and then they text their boyfriend and tell their boyfriend that they love him and uh he he just couldn't he said he'd, he'd find it very hard to take relationships seriously after that yeah, so, talk heavy shit. That's the that, red pill that, if you've ever that, heard yeah, it. Very, very heavy because that's like it's all it's our, collect, our, our collective anima, I guess, is um it's quite shallow, it's very sexual, very, very sexualized. And a lot of young men in this particular sphere, they don't understand that women are actually individuals too. Because if you actually say that to them, it's like that's the, that's a really difficult idea to get because it's well, women, it's just hypergamy doesn't matter and they're baby making machines, and it's like that's that's of course you'd get jaded with that because because like like casual sex with lots of beautiful women is just doing the same thing over and over and over again and the individual is completely interchangeable it's just like i'm going to get my nut it's like well, well sure go get to your nut but that's that's not that's not stable and long lasting and it's also not correct well, that's so that's one side of it is that it does wear away at the man's soul like uh, like i think it wears like i think if a girl has more than 10 men she's pretty much fucked in terms of marriage for life that's the statistics have come out to say that's yeah, not that's that, not that's theory really that's not stefan theory right there that's like I, statistical evidence has shown that's true that, like, uh, which, which way around do you think it is quickly do you think it's because there are two possible reasons for that it's either that something in the metaphysics or something in the brain that we don't understand switches the brain into like a particular mode where she becomes incapable of having a long-lasting marriage that's that, I, that's I, like one of them, I, or it's people with that attitude do not have an attitude that is that serves a lifelong marriage i would say that it's the first i don't know though i haven't thought about it too much but i would imagine that if a girl gets with a lot of dudes she, it's sort of something in her just decides this is who i'm going to be like I, I guess that's the sort of what happens and then they, they're forever dealing with it because i've heard girls talk about this before i've heard i've been with girls who have been like older and they sort of like i remember i was with one girl and she uh she, it was so strange she she says i kind of wish i wasn't with, with so many guys hmm. you know and she's old she's past her peak now so she can't go back on that and um, she's not old like she's fucking you know early 30s like she's still a gorgeous girl but it's like th there is that lilting regret that she did she made that mistake and there's no going back and uh and, and and that seemed very psychological to me. That wasn't the type of person. That seemed very psychological, and it's like get get to a nunnery type thing coming after it. And what what I was trying to say there was that I think that that women it damages their soul to some extent. I think to some extent though with men, um, like you know, like a women get ten. I say if a man gets a hundred bures, I don't think there's any going back from that. I think he'll just be like, uh, like the amount of experiences he'll have, like that Todd guy who who witnessed a girl call her boyfriend in bed beside him after he fucked her and say i love you like how could you how could you really look at a woman the same after that that changes you so much do you know what i mean and there was loads of other experiences he talks about he's great for storytelling he, he says that uh, he he took a girl in to vegas and he like had sex with her brought her to, uh, to the hotel room and he tried to exchange numbers with her at the end of it and she got disgusted because she, he was her vegas playboy where he was going to fuck her and dump her and she, he he wasn't supposed to respect her or give her a number. And then he asked for her number and she was instantly, she saw a beta male. So it was almost like, like when a woman has sex with an alpha male and then discovers he's a beta male because of some behavior, because alpha beta is a behavior thing. Uh, it's literally like, imagine if you pulled a girl, brought her home, ripped off her dress and she had a dick. Like it's that type of energy. It's like, what the fuck's going on? So, um, so she was just horrified at him for that. And then he, he, uh, he he started to he started he, he got a little bit jaded about that it's like it, it, like you know as they all do because if you're the alpha male you're in the receiving end of the hypergamy and then you, it becomes very hard to trust because it's not a theory to you it's like fuck it's real and loads of those juicy alpha males like you see them on twitter and shit they're they're almost like i'm never gonna get married mm. and uh and fuck man like i don't know like 
I'd like a life partner, but it's it's a scary. Th- I, I don't know. I don't know what to make it out. Like I'm too young to figure that shit out. Like so, you can't go Midtown now. Not after you just ratted on them for two hours. Well, this is what I mean. Is that I think these boys they go through that stuff and then they go Migtown. But like that doesn't mean seem to make sense to me either because I don't think denying women is the other thing. But then like what are you gonna do? I have a modern relationship where you're like you know girlfriend and boyfriend for thirty fucking years. Like like I don't know. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I have a lot to say on that topic because I'm engaged at the age of 22. So yeah. obviously, so I've done a lot of thinking on that, but perhaps uh, not at the end of an hour on nature. Yes, true. <laughs> Let's get through the last few of these and then we'll bounce. Um, women saying that to men, it's actually their animus. I I, I lost the context. That's sorry, Roman. Um, respect, Quamans, and then a cry faced. That was Ra. It's James. True. Hello? Hello. Yeah, well, good. James and Stefan, can you discuss religion on your next video? Yes, we can. James. I mean, yeah, I mean, depends what you want to talk about religion because we're technically talking about religion now. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we will, uh, Kirby will definitely get, get around to that. They need to react to an anime trailer uh, of Marx. Karl Marx <laughs> anime is the best anime. Uh, Patreon question there. Oh, so here we go. Degenerate in my entire life than Karl Marx anime. <laughs> I'd actually gladly do that. We'll try to figure out the screen share where we can watch videos, and that should be class. And um, so we, we should open up the next IELTS lecture doing that, and then put yeah. it in the, the Carl Jung subreddit. This is anime. Anime is very close to animus if, or anima if you think about it. Oh, synchronicity. There you go. So we must study it if it's some kind of work of art. And if you think about what the MGTOW people do, is that they turn the anima they turn like they project their anima onto anime like you know they stopped looking for real women and they start going to like uh, cartoon women they go into the meme world that is the thing because it's also kind of it's kind of a red pill on on pedophilia it's really weird because anime girls are meant to look like nine years old what so, nine because this disney princesses too basically they they have more emotional weight to them if they've got really big eyes and it's, it's to do with certain proportions in the face but they look really young like anime girls don't look old they look young. oh well i, so, I think so, that's that's neoteny though like um like men and generally in biology in general and even women to an extent are attracted to neotenized features like youthful features like i just clicked anime here and the first girl i saw has massive tits and huge eyes like i wouldn't call her a nine-year-old she seems like a oh, no, cute... those, like facially in the way they act as well not that i watch anime because i'm not a fucking degenerate but, but <laughs> the, way, the, way, the way that they act is really definitely charged. watches anime it's really charging. i was i was turned off of anime uh because the first one i was told to watch was called school days and i don't know if many people have heard of this but it's basically like six episodes you're at a school doing your thing and then they all have like ridiculous sex with each other and then one of the girls <laughs> rampage and kills the boyfriend puts the boyfriend's head spoilers for school days puts the boyfriend's head in like a package and sends it to the other girl who he was cheating with and that's the end of the series so, <laughs> it's, it's anime tits and it ends with murder it's like well i don't need that in my life thank you is that anime it, ja- I, 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 yeah it is I, I just find it creepy because the girls they're not real women it's like it's like where where, where porn is like a hyper sexualized woman it's like anime they seem to tend towards really young and that's creepy to me so like you can't deal with a real woman i'll deal with this sort of like fake cartoon big eyed big titted thing it's yeah it's weird i was about to say something extremely racist because like i think (laughs) asians don't have as big eyes as europeans but then they their anime has massive eyes that's kind of weird yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i don't know if that's to make or they could be to look more white because japanese culture does like to look more white or if it could be a youth thing i think i think it's a youth thing that's actually true They're, they're all white all of these Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, few... they, they have practice over there with actually whitening their skin, which is most obscure. Oh, yeah. I mean, sister saw some some Asians doing that. That was crazy. There, there is also the thing, though, I've, I've seen that the, the emojis, the smiley faces in Europe focus more in the mouth, whereas the smiley faces in Asia focus more in the eyes, which is pretty cool. So, the, like, the expression is based around the eyes in Asia, whereas it's based on the mouth in Europe, which is weird when you think about it, because, yeah, that's, that's a hard thing. It's hard to figure out. That, that is definitely strange. I think we're definitely off topic, though. <laughs> um, okay, wait. I'll go for this last one. Uh, da, 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 da. This last one is probably the best one. 
uh, anime is very traditional you just got you're just like fuck you fuck you james and you're talking <laughs> thoughts okay so here's the last one and then we'll close it up talk about alex jones getting caught watching transgender porn Am I good? you're gonna, you're gonna have to uh, we're, we're gonna have to look that up hang on, i'm pretty sure i know what this is this is where like he pulled up his phone or something and it had like porn tabs open and he's like he was only watching it to to monitor the situation or something it, 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 it's either that or it was an accident because he's always got porn popping up, popping up on his phone. <laughs> I mean, I'd love that to be true. Like, I'd love him to just be a filthy porn addict. Well, okay, so it's very easy to hide sexual fetishes, first of all. Very, very easy to hide it because people don't know you, right? And, and a lot of modern conservatives aren't conservatives. It's, it's like the Jordan oh, Peterson yeah. definitely the truth. They're not acting out moral virtue they just say that they do so in many ways they're no better than than the leftist types so you know wait. if, if, if he's trying to touch himself go for it man okay wait a second now. so the, the the title of this article is infowars host alex jones caught looking at transgender porn despite anti-trans um no nah, it's eagle eye viewers they yeah no nah, no nah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he wants to look at transgender porn, that makes him a, a hypocrite and lowers his status in my eyes, and I won't be joining him. That's it. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, transgender anime porn, by any chance? No? Take it? Take I mean, it. yeah, that makes it fine, of course. We I, I been... don't get this. I don't get, there's also, um, my, my, my brother recently informed me that he has friends who watch um, not just anime porn, but child anime porn. And oh what like, the fuck! It, it, Smack it, it, them, like, motherfuckers! Conservative, and in their free time they'll watch child anime porn. It's like, what is it with with anime and porn, and then trans and porn? And... What do you mean, child anime porn? That sounds fucking twisted. What? Yeah, so you see hentai is anime porn. By the way, this video is getting demonetized immediately. It's... Hentai porn. Well, hentai. So, so, you know, hentai is, is another word for anime porn. So it's got another name too, which is specifically anime child porn. Oh, for fuck's sake, dude! I didn't know that was a thing. What? Yeah, it's the, it's the next step. It's like when you when you study porn addiction and what porn does to the brain, it's always escalating fetishes because your dopamine system burns itself out because yeah. it's just strong stimulus. You need more to get excited. So of course, that's maybe what Alex Jones is doing. He started on normal porn, now he's on the trannies, and then he's yeah, well, like... word, of course, and then he's going to be on the the um, anime transgender porn. That's sort of what happens when you're like into Satan and shit. You're like, well, where the fuck do we go next? It's like, well, transgender porn. Who knows, man? Jeez. This has been such a festive Christmassy episode. This is, um, to be honest, like we may seem like we're off topic, but a lot of this stuff, like if we were to dig into that stuff, a lot of that stuff would focus on neurosis surrounding the, the drama of uh, the anima and the animus. So uh, that's the, how I maintain the integrity. And of course, the, the academic and intellectual integrity for all those professors that will be studying this. Um, and <laughs> this is just two juicy boyos reading a book. That's all it was. Two juicy boyos reading a book, giving you some insights. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, potato camera over here james and the other tell us your comments below subscribe i will send some links at the bottom if you'd like to support us you can support james you can check out his channel check out his twitter you can support me on patreon paypal i might even drop my email list for some of you lucky motherfuckers who want to learn more about Huaman. and uh james have you any last comments before we bounce because we'll have to do more anima next week with the sound of it. Uh, yeah first of all merry christmas i love you all second of all make sure <laughs> it's you... the least passionate <laughs> merry christmas i've ever seen it. merry christmas love you all you fucking child porn watching generate <laughs> motherfucker yeah, i've been, been burned now i need to go watch some some proper conservative stuff after this like like roger scruton roger roger scruton the english conservative guy and um, what i'm gonna say is pick yourself up a nice um, Carl Jung and Stephen and James themed Christmas present, which would be this book, and we will leave a link to it in the description. Whether or not you're in the UK or in the USA, you should pick it up for yourself. Have a nice Carl Jung themed Christmas. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And uh, make sure you don't support Stefan's Patreon and instead support mine, because <laughs> you actually get perks with mine, whereas with yours, you're always just sitting there like... Yeah, actually... Oh, no. I'll be just dreams for you if you give me like $300 a month or something obscene. 
don't get fooled by my Patreon. I say I have a private group, but like I literally don't use it, so I'm going to link it to James's instead because then I'm at least offering something. But you can support me for like 300 euro a month or something for like I don't know, just for the whims. I'm sure I'll be I'll be sound to you, like you know, it'll be grand. And um, thank you very much, people. It was great, great talking to you all in the chat and all that. Be sure to tune in around about this time next week, and we will continue on our odyssey into the deep dark underworlds overworlds of the collective unconscious james thank you very much sir thank you sir appreciate it bye-bye bye-bye